There's the fish again on the graph. Got another one. And I'm not excited about fishing this spot yet. This feels better. I think it's time to actually drop a line in the water to fish this hump. Got him. Well, that's what you want to see right there. We spent, we got one. A lot of time graphing. Right there is a long one. Very little time fishing. And there he is. But while we've been fishing, we've been catching. What is up, fisher people? We're gonna do some hardcore graphing today during a scouting trip. And I'm basically gonna do a lot of driving around, prop a camera right on the old graph, tell you exactly what I'm seeing, exactly what I'm looking for, whether or not a spot looks good to fish, whether or not there's enough fish there, whether or not it's, eh, maybe you get one or two here, but probably not worth spending a lot of time whether you need to just do a lot of bouncing around or actually spend some time, hunker down in an area and fish it hard. So that's what the plan is. We do a lot of driving around, probably two or three hours of graphing, I would guess. See seven, eight, nine spots, and then go back and try to fish one or two of those spots after we do that and see what it produces. So I'm pulling up to this, uh, it's a point at the mouth of the bay. And the first thing I like to do is just kind of drive right straight into the point, come up the brake line, and try to kind of figure out, generally speaking, where things are sitting. What kind of depths are we looking at? So you can already see some bait there deeper than 30 feet of water. But I want to get a little closer into this brake line. Here's a suspended fish. I don't know if that's a walleye or if that's a Cisco, a gold eye, something like that. That's potentially a small walleye down there. There's a fish out here on side imaging. Haven't seen anything too terribly exciting yet. The decent bait cloud, which is basically like, that's just a collection of thousands, if not like a million tiny little, probably smelt, something along those lines, that group together in big schools. And you'll notice, like, one thing you want to pay attention to is the speed that I'm going, and a lot of times you want your chart speed here to match the speed that you're going to get the most accurate picture. That would be a down imaging fish. So my boats, when I'm idling, is typically moving four to five mile an hour. I'm not quite doing that right now, but typically it is. So I got my chart speed set at five. That's another thing to pay attention to. Like when, when you start to slow down, you start to troll, the marks are gonna get longer on the screen as well because of that whole thing. But they're staying in the cone angle longer. So they're gonna start to elongate on your readout as well. This is a bunch of rocks out here. As of yet, if I were graphing this spot, I definitely would not fish this unless I saw something better. Here's a spot that's fairly intriguing with this long point extension. There's one walleye down there, probably in the midst of all that bait down deep. Some two fish here that match those fish there that are kind of up in the water column, not excited. That's probably a walleye in the middle of that bait down there. So a lot of the fish I'm seeing so far are kind of in that 28, 30 foot range. There's another suspended fish of some kind. I don't know what that is. There could be walleye suspending up there, chasing food. That's entirely possible. I'm not planning on fishing suspended walleyes today though. So there's one nice fish, two nice fish sitting down there in that bay cloud. Very, very rocky. I'm in a very rocky area of the lake. There's some very tiny fish crawling on the bottom right there. Could be like 12, 14 inch walleyes. And there's three probably walleyes sitting there in 32, fairly high up off the bottom. Still not a great trolling pass thing. Like maybe if anything, you drop a jig or a jigging wrap down there quick and try to 
pick up one or two there quick, but not a spot I would really sit on for too long. If I had seen like a stack of like six, eight, ten fish right on the tip of the point, that'd be a perfect spot where you just like sit on top of them with a the jigger jigging around, or maybe you'd sit off them a little bit and cast up there. All right, spot number three in this area. Another point. I'm getting to the point myself where if I don't start to see fish on the third spot in this area, instead of continuing to look at different spots, I might just kind of like go to the other side of the lake, cruise a few miles up the shore, like get, get into a totally different area at this point. We got one down imaging fish here. I'm still not seeing something that's like, dang, this is gonna be hot, I'm gonna drop lines. That's one walleye there probably. And maybe that's just kind of the area. Like if I were if I were fishing out west right now, if you're fishing the Van Hook Arm, for example, none of this stuff looks good. None of this stuff looks fishable. You should be able to mark, especially when you're moving at three, four, five mile an hour, you should be able to mark fish two, three at a time on the graph, if not more than that. If you're on a really hot spot, you might see five to ten fish down here at all times when you're cruising at this speed. And then you know, okay. I got some fish here, this is worth fishing. And the other thing is too, like depending on the depth that you're in, your cone angle is going to be bigger and cover more ground the deeper that you are. So in 26 feet, I better see some fish. If I'm in 12 and I'm seeing an occasional fish, or if I'm in 8, seeing an occasional fish, there might be a lot more fish there than I see. If I'm in 25 and I'm just marking one here, one there, that's not good enough. And yeah, you can get some fish tucked in the rocks, it looks like there might be one peeking out of the rock there. So sometimes you don't really know when you got rocks this big, whether or not there's fish there until you fish it. But since I just got out here, it's the third spot I've looked at. I think I'm gonna pass on this. Spot number four, looking at another long point. Still tons of bait in the area. So you'd think there should be some fish around somewhere, but there might just be way more bait than there is fish to go around, so. Just because you see bait doesn't mean there's going to be fish there. If you do see bait, it's worth a look. There's a stack of walleyes a little bit down in those rocks. For sure two, maybe three of them down there. So, so far from what I've seen, if I was fishing this area, I would just kind of point hop, try to pick up one or two fish quick, dropping a jig or a jigging wrap, and move on. I wouldn't troll it. I'm trying to look for more numbers right now. That's probably a fish fairly tight to bottom there. This might be one of the better spots we've seen so far, but it's still not amazing. Now, depending on what lake you're in, like there's a fairly suspended fish. This might be a good screenshot. Depends on how many walleyes you have. If I'm fishing Sakakawea, there's another one. I need to, there's, there's millions of walleyes in here. You can find spots that look a lot better than this. This isn't bad. This fourth spot's probably the best spot that I've seen so far in this area. And since that's the sample I've had, like if I was fishing out here to fish hard, I'd probably troll this. I've seen fish, you know, we're still seeing three on the graph at the same time right now. I'd probably troll this part of the point in 25 to 28 feet, see what I can get. That might be one way down there but considering the video I'm trying to make and the goal that I have of covering water and seeing things, it's the best spot that I've seen, but I'm not gonna fish it yet. It's probably a side imaging fish. And you can see now, once we get away from these rocks and you see this kind of stuff, clear hard bottom or sand, like side imaging fish should really start to pop right now. Like if there's fish there, you're gonna see them right now pretty much. Unless they're super, super negative, super tight to bottom. Here's a fish on the bottom there. You're gonna notice them when you're looking at a clear graph like this, tight to bottom fish. Fish. This would be a spot worth trolling. But again, you're not always graphing every fish that's down there, so there might be something, side imaging fish. There might be something you're not seeing and you might actually catch more than you expected to. It's fishable, that's a fishable spot.
I'm gonna look at a slightly bigger spot now, a bigger area to see if I can find more fish instead of looking at spot on the spot, little rock points and stuff. I wanna see if I can find some numbers along a big shelf. You can see there's just a wall of bait down there, just loaded with smelt. And I'm making that assumption because this is Lake Sakakawea. If you see that much bait, it's probably gonna be smelt. There's a walleye, 24 feet. Another fish down here. A little shallower. And what I did is I went across the other side of the lake. So we've had wind blowing out of the north a lot the last few days. I started on the north side and I went around to the south side. And I'm not excited about fishing this spot yet. Basically like the end of a point at the mouth of a bay and then there's all kinds of chunky little islands attached to it, if you will. So far you can see the bait again. You can see you got kind of sand slash gravelly bottom, not big boulders yet. So far if I had seen what I'd seen, basically my strategy would be point hopping. Make a pass or two on a point, pick up a few fish, go to another one. I haven't seen a spot yet where you can get all your fish out of one area, I don't think. Fish out here. That shell could also be smallmouth sitting around these rocks, potentially. I could see this being a big smallmouth spot as that hump comes up to pretty shallow depth, and I'm sure it's got a lot of rock around it. Here's all the rock. You can see the rock now on both sides. I would imagine there's a bunch of smallies in this area. Maybe a fish real hunkered down to bottom there. I'm probably looking too shallow to find walleyes at this point. I was curious, but I hadn't. That's probably a bass mark. That's probably a smallie. That'd be my guess, sitting in 18 feet. Suspended up a little bit. The shape's a little different. Not quite as long. That's probably a walleye. 18 feet, nonetheless. Not really seeing anything cruising this ledge in 22, 3, 4 feet though. So I'm probably off to the next spot. I'm in a little bit of a different area here. I'm going to cross the lake again and further west. Went to some sandier, flatter stuff. And just kind of cruising around looking at some of the I think that's actually a fish in that bait mix. The sandier, flatter stuff, we got some points and some humps around here. Flats have the capacity to hold a ton of fish in big schools a lot of times. Looking around here, that's that looks like a sizable fish. It's pretty thick, relatively speaking. I expect a walleye to maybe be a little longer than that, but we are moving at three mile an hour. Still looks a little shorter, more compact than some of the other marks we've seen. Come off the drop here, not seeing much. Blast up to this next hump. Come up top. You know, like I said, the play here is I'm, I'm hoping this is going to be something that's going to hold more fish. There's two right there, I think, by that bait. But if I can still only see two to three to four on little points and corners of humps, it's not a lot better than what I was looking at before. And the reason I'm looking for big numbers is because if I'm coming out here guiding, ideally I'd like to find a spot where I could put in some time and catch a lot of fish in, a, in, a, in one area. If I can find a big flat that has just hundreds of fish on it that I can work back and forth, get the whole job done. This is starting to look much better. This hump, there's a nice cluster. There's four of them right there. There's another one. This hump is looking really good. And it's a fairly big hump in the sense that I think I could actually troll bottom bounces around it. I don't think it's a tiny spot on the spot kind of thing that you have to, you could pitch jig and wraps, jigs, that kind of thing, but you could troll this. You could troll around this hump, and even though it's not a mother load situation yet, it's probably the most concentrated fish we've seen 
out of what, seven or eight spots we've looked at. It's 11.43 now. We've covered miles and miles of water. I'd say this is the second spot, like between this spot and that fourth spot, that other point, I think you could probably put together a limit of fish on those two spots if they're biting well. I think it's time to actually drop a line in the water, fish this hump. What do you say? All right, so we're actually fishing now and I can see two or three fish on the graph right now. And I'll show you that screenshot that I just took on my phone. You can see what the marks look a little more like when you're actually slowed down and trolling, how much longer they look compared to the shorter, more compact marks when you're moving at speed. Now we're only moving at 0.9, one mile an hour, fishing the spot. So we got a line out, we got a bottom bouncer, we got a little green prop blade and a half night crawler. We're gonna see if those fish actually take it. I don't normally spend quite that much time, especially on Sakakawea Lake that I'm familiar with, graphing without fishing, but that was the kind of video I wanted to do. That was the kind of video that some people wanted. And it is an area that I don't fish a ton. So it was worth spending some time getting the lay of the land. I would normally fish it a little more intermittently throughout there, but another mark pretty tight to bottom. And some marks behind 23.6 feet. There's a decent amount of marks down there now. Right on the point of this hump. If they're in a biting mood and I got the right stuff out, these fish should take. That's the other thing is, just because you found fish doesn't mean you're going to catch them. Sometimes you find fish that are inactive. And you go, oh great, well, I got part of it done. But now I got to get them to eat. And we're hooked up. You got one of these little guys to bite, and it does feel little. But it's a wally. I do think I was marking better fish than that on the grass. But that's the first one that bit. We found them. We caught them. Got another one. Feels a shade bigger. Not a lot. No, about the same size. Got some more marks down there. One of them looks maybe a little bigger, unless it's a double mark. Sometimes fish are tight together and it looks like one big mark and it's two. A lot of times you're down imaging can help you tell the difference there. I got a slow death hook out here now. Got hit while I was messing with my other fish. Lost him. Didn't stay on. Might just be a small fish spot. We got one more small fish we're gonna pull out here, I think. This feels better. That was a slow death. Still don't need a net though. Got a little sauger blood in them, I think. You can see the spots and stuff. That's probably a, a little bit of a cross between a walleye and a sauger. You can keep that one at least, but still not what we're looking for. Something I'm gonna keep moving. Well, that's what you want to see right there. The tip of this point. I'm gonna fish that. Given the amount of marks we saw at the tip of that point. That I just showed you. And I can see two on the screen here already. I think there's a really good chance we're gonna get bit on this pass pretty easily. Make sure I hit my line right. Stay on where I saw those fish. There's a bunch on the screen. Will they bite? I don't know if they're big. I think it's a cluster of little ones again, but it looks so much like an automatic bite type of thing. But nothing's automatic. There's a bite. Take it down. Oh, you had it and let go. Oh, the slow death's getting one. Got him. You got him. Pretty much looked like an automatic bite situation, and sure enough, we got one. It's probably about the size of those fish down there, is my guess, though. We haven't found a spot with nice, meaty 18 inches yet, so. But we grabbed a bunch of fish, it looked like an automatic bite, and we had two bites, one that stayed on, so. That's how you do it. Turn right back around, went right through here, and honestly, 
this spot is probably better. You can make a bunch of really short passes. I don't know, it probably took me two minutes, three minutes to get from one end to the next. So it might be a better spot for jigging, casting, than it is for trolling, unless you're just gonna go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Still got fish on the graph. Still don't think they're very big. 25 feet of water. Got an ugly braid not messing this thing. There we go. That thing got pulled way too tight in there. Oh, there's just a pile of fish, geez. At 1236, stacked. But I think most of them are little. There's a bite. He's just hanging on it. Got him. <laughs> He's just hanging on that sucker. This feels like it has a little more weight, actually. This could be more in the 17, 18 category. Is the fish bigger? Yeah, it is bigger. That's a nice fish. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful walleye. Sometimes you just gotta wade through them. That's a nice 18 inch fish. Right there, he's a long one. I need forceps to get that hook out there, but and there he is. Nice. 17 and a half, push an 18 inch walleye. 25 feet of water. Find them, mark them, pull through them, catch them. Especially if you get that many marks on the graph. You can, you can put it together. One more spot here, 119 p.m. A mess of fish on the graph. Will they bite? They did bite as soon as I turned off the camera. Decent fish. An edible 16 and a half to 17 inch long. I even snuck up here into 18 feet on this spot. Hooked into one that feels pretty decent. But there it is. Nice fish up a little shallower. Another big pot of marks when it came up to 18 foot. Guiding fish, eater fish. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got you. Going back in the water. There's the fish again on the graph. And you'll notice that uh, we spent a lot of time graphing, very little time fishing. But while we've been fishing, we've been catching. We're not just aimlessly pulling lines through the water. If you're fishing 15 plus feet of water, you will see the fish on your graph. There's another bite. And you will know that they're there unless they're hiding in rocks or unless they're really, really tight to bottom, you're gonna know that must have been a really little fish. He did not take all of that. If we can get another 17, 18 incher, that'll make it easier. Those little 13, 14s don't do it very well. <laughs> Once that one bit, he slaughtered it pretty good. <laughs> Maybe a keeper. So if you like this video, hit the button to say so. Think about subscribing to the channel and maybe think about supporting it on Patreon. I greatly appreciate you guys watching. I greatly appreciate all the stuff you do. We're getting close to a thousand subscribers. Hopefully we can make that mark soon. That'd be really awesome. And if you're sitting there thinking, I haven't subscribed yet. I watch this channel a lot. Hit the subscribe button and maybe you can be number 1000. Later Fisher people.